now we will we will look at you know like how we can uh, quantify knocking and other uh, what to say uh, aspects related to that right so one uh, important concept uh, which we will uh, definition which we will uh, look at is what is called as a uh, octane number okay so as we can readily observe knocking is influenced by uh, uh, or knocking is a phenomena where the fuel self ignites. So, the question is you know like how can we characterize a fuel you know like for its anti knock tendencies or anti knock properties ok. So, the quantity which is used is what is called as an uh, octane number. So, octane number is indicative of the anti knock characteristics of a fuel ok used in SI engines ok. So, what is the definition let me write down the definition it is the percentage by volume of iso octane ok whose chemical composition is C 8 H 18 iso octane, octane has a very good uh, anti knock characteristic. So, that is taken as the base ok. So, iso octane in a mixture of iso octane and normal heptane whose chemical composition is C 7 H 16 which exactly matches the knocking intensity of the fuel in a standard engine under a set of standard operating conditions. Okay. So, that is the definition of octane number. So, what are these uh, uh, standard uh, standard operating conditions and what is a standard engine. Uh, so, the uh, uh, reference would be this at the annual book of uh, ASTM ok. ASTM stands for uh, American <coughs> Society for Testing and Materials. Uh, ASTM standards ok and uh, volume 05.04 and the title of the standard is test methods for rating uh, motor uh, diesel and aviation fuels. Okay. So, uh, people do a standard test in the standard engine under the standard operating conditions. You uh, let us say someone gives us a gasoline fuel, we figure out you know like what is the uh, knocking intensity of the fuel in terms of the pressure pulses which are felt when the engine knocks and uh, we then you know like have to uh, adjust the percentage of iso octane and normal heptane right such that we get the same knocking intensity experimentally right. So, then the percentage of iso octane in that mixture will give us the octane number. Obviously, a higher octane number is better right. So, a higher octane number uh, what is called O n which is octane number is desirable 
and it implies that the fuel can be used at higher compression ratios okay this implies better efficiency and fuel economy right so these are the benefits of of having a higher octane number okay so that's the phenomenon of knocking and octane number is a parameter which is used to characterize the anti knock characteristics of a fuel okay uh, so the next topic that we are going to uh, look at is the combustion process in uh, ci engines or compression ignition engines or diesel engines so we looked at uh, how uh, the combustion happens in si engines let's go and now look at what happens in a compression ignition engine so uh, just a few concepts before we go to the actual uh, process in a ci engine so if we recall the main difference in a diesel engine or a compression ignition engine is that the fuel is sprayed into the combustion chamber towards the end of the compression stroke right so that's what happens in the diesel engine so let's say we have a fuel injector and fuel is sprayed in to the combustion chamber so let's say we have a jet of fuel okay i am just exaggerating the diagram to drive home the concept okay so let's say we have a nozzle and we spray a jet of fuel okay into the combustion chamber now for proper combustion you know as we have already uh, discussed we need fuel we need oxygen in the correct proportion and we need a mechanism for initiating the combustion process right in a compression ignition engine the initiation of the com combustion process happens due to self ignition ignition of the fuel so here the mechanism of combustion is by self ignition of fuel okay or the fuel reaches its self ignition temperature and burns by itself okay that's so that's how it happens and in a spark ignition engine right if we uh, if we uh, recall what was the mechanics uh, we took in the fuel air mixture during the suction stroke and we compressed the fuel air mixture during the compression stroke so we gave enough time for the fuel air mixture to mix well together you know for the fuel to vaporize during the compression stroke so that a homogeneous mixture is formed so obviously a homogeneous mixture helps because a homogeneous mixture will ensure that the combustion process is smooth right on the other hand in a compression ignition engine you know the fuel is sprayed towards the end of compression right and we have very little time to spread the fuel throughout the combustion chamber okay so there are some other additional uh, what to say effects or attributes that one needs to consider okay so two important attributes that we need to consider not only for uh, compression ignition engines but for all engines for that matter you know like is the first one is atomization of fuel so what what do we mean by at atomization of fuel so we want the fuel droplets to be split into finer particles right into smaller entities okay so let's say i have a droplet of fuel i want it to be broken down into finer particles and finer entities and then like spread throughout the combustion chamber right so the next one is vaporization of fuel <coughs> so vaporization of fuel is conversion of fuel from its liquid form to its vapor form 
right. So, that is the process of vaporization. Why is it important? But only be when it reaches its vapor form, it can also mix well with its uh, what to say uh, uh, with uh, air and the combustion process can be more efficient, okay. So, both these are extremely important, okay, in ensuring proper combustion. So, another attribute which becomes important in compression ignition engines is this phenomena of air swirl. What is air swirl? Suppose let us say I, I essentially um, spray fuel into the combustion chamber. What I want is that I want some circulation of air in the combustion chamber so that the fuel particles and droplets get spread evenly in the combustion chamber, right. Otherwise, they will be concentrated in a narrow domain, right, local to the injector's path, right, the, the jet's path, right. So, we want a controlled air swirl such that the fuel particles are not only broken down into smaller entities, having a proper air swirl will break down the particles into smaller entities, it will help in uh, atomization of fuel, but also it will spread the fuel more uniformly in the combustion chamber. So, air swirl uh, becomes very important. So, air swirl is nothing but uh, motion of air in the combustion chamber to ensure the formation of a near homogeneous fuel air mixture, okay. So, that is the concept of air swirl, okay. So, another important attribute is the following. So, let us say I am just exaggerating, let us say I have a, a droplet of diesel fuel, okay, like this, right. So, le let us assume that there is a ferry ferry which vaporizes and it burns, okay. So, say, let us say it combusts and burns, right. So, there is an unburnt core. Okay. And if the combustion process happens in this way, not only are we going to be left with lot of unburnt fuel in the engine exhaust that will affect the fuel economy, but it will also have a serious repercussion as far as emissions are concerned. So, typically we will get this black smoke, right, from diesel engines you know like due to this factor right. So, that is if you have this significant amount of unburned fuel or partially burned fuel right in the uh, diesel engine and that is going to be essentially uh, given to the exhaust system and to the atmosphere we will see this uh, unburned fuel in the exhaust which get visualized as black smoke right in the diesel engines exhaust and that is something which is undesirable as we can see because it not only wastes fuel, it also results in a serious emission problem. That is why not only we want do we want proper atomization and vaporization of fuel, we also want this air swirl to help these processes. But even after this, please recall that the process of this distribution of this diesel fuel in the combustion chamber its atomization, its vaporization, formation of a homogeneous mixture, all these events must happen in a relatively smaller amount of time. Why? Because the fuel is injected towards the end of the compression stroke. Whereas, in a SI engine, we had like almost like 1 to 1 and a half strokes for the homogenization to happen, right, because the suction stroke was the one where fuel air mixture was taken in, right. Even assuming that the fuel air mixture was taken in, during the suction stroke completely, we at least have the compression stroke where the fuel could mix nicely with air you know like get 
homogeneous properly right but in a diesel engine we have very little time okay so in order to tackle this problem also typically a leaner mixture is used in diesel engines right to essentially uh, safeguard against this phenomena right of unburned fuel being there right despite our best efforts so diesel engines typically are operated with leaner mixture that means that we have less fuel in the mixture than the stoichiometric fuel air mixture so this is mainly uh, done to prevent incomplete combustion and the consequent <coughs> presence of unburned fuel in the exhaust. So that is what happens uh, that is why we want to use it with a leaner uh, mixture. So today in mo modern diesel engines what happens is that the fuel is injected you know to overcome these uh, uh, aspects also and to address these issues uh, fuel is injected at very high pressures injected at high pressures okay uh, using uh, as multiple jets into the combustion chamber okay the fuel injection system itself is very complex uh, very complex and in multi cylinder <coughs> diesel engines you know like uh, uh, what is called as a common rail diesel injection system is uh, utilized okay to facilitate this where wherein the diesel fuel itself is pumped to very high pressures and then sprayed as a fine mist into the combustion chamber so when we spray it as a fine mist due to the high pressure difference it helps the atomization process right so we don't have this diesel as lumps you know like which can uh, what to say uh, uh, accelerate this unburned fuel and the black smoke in the exhaust right so we have a fine mist so atomization is better mixing is better vaporization is better and the combustion process is much more cleaner okay so uh, that is what is called as common rail direct injection okay so where the uh, fuel is uh, introduced in common rail direct injection okay so it is introduced uh, at very high pressures okay into the engine so uh, let me stop here we will look at the uh, stages of combustion in a ci engine in the next class and discuss what is normal combustion when can combustion become abnormal in ci engines and then continue with uh, uh, the combustion uh, process discussion okay thank you